Oh, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel with Just Fan TV, man. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, all right, man. We about uh, less than a week away from Ravens training camp. So when it comes to training camp, there's training camp battles. When it comes to training camp battles, there's guys that lose out. So I kind of want to talk about, you know, we know about the guys at the top of the roster, right? Um, the star players, right? I want to talk about the guys who are fighting for a roster spot, right? I want to talk about three players in particular that could be fighting for a roster spot um, as training camp rolls along. And um, if they don't perform a certain way in training camp, who knows, that could be the end of the road for them as far as being on the Ravens next season, right? All right. Um, first guy, James Prochet, man. James Prochet. James Prochet is one of my... Um, <laughs> I do like I do like James Prochet a lot. You know, I do feel like it's unfortunate. I think he's been in a uh, tough situation to grow as a wide receiver, playing in a Greg Roman offense. Um, as we've kind of seen with the Greg Roman offense, only really one wide receiver gets a chance to really shine. That was Marquise Brown before. Um, so now we're in a new era, Todd Munkin, which is probably the, the best it's going to be for Ravens wide receivers coming into this new era of passing, more dynamic offense. But – Unfortunately for James Prochet, the Ravens have upgraded the wide receiver room in every possible way imaginable. Pretty much one to five is pretty much locked up. So that means they're you're fighting for that six wide receiver spot. And even that spot has a lot of competition from a lot of different guys on the Ravens that they signed, including former first round pick Laquan Treadwell, right? So as far as Prochet goes, um, like I said, he's got that. I don't think he's had a fair shake. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, when he's got on the field, what has he done? I'm not I'm not here to disagree with that. But this this is my thing. This is my take on Prochet, right? Um, the simple fact is, right, uh, when he's played a lot of snaps, he's usually played well. Where he struggled at has been taking Ann off the lineup, things like that. Now, there's no sympathy because, you know, when you get in, you got to produce. Last year, James Prochet had a really, really bad habit of getting in the game, and make it a dumb mistake, whether it was a penalty, whatever it happened to be, right? It seemed like his head wasn't all the way in the game, okay? Um, he didn't really have anything as far as impressive games, so that was going to make you stand out. I do remember he had an impressive catch versus the uh, Buccaneers, but also a play that I can't believe people bring up against him. Yes, he dropped the Hail Mary in the uh, playoff game, if he, even if you want to call it a drop. I mean, it was a damn near impossible catch, but... Uh, he looked like he was close enough to make a play on it. So it's just like everything that could have went wrong for James Prochet last year went wrong, right? So um, right now he's coming into, sorry, excuse me, this, this would be year four. Okay, he's coming into year four, and he's never had more than 16 catches in a season. And like I said, the Ravens have significantly upgraded that wide receiver room. Uh, 2021, he had a really good game versus the Bengals. They had a good game versus the Broncos, I believe, that same season. We thought some momentum would carry forward. He's played pretty well during training camps and off-season workouts, but in the past, it just hasn't fully translated into consistency during the NFL regular season, right? And uh, without a major uptick in his performance, um, he's not going to be on the roster. You know what I mean? That's that, To me, that's unfortunate because I think he is a guy with ability. But like I said, the Ravens system, the Ravens passive development wide receivers have all been things that worked against them. But at the end of the day, you got to make do with what you got. And Ravens have upgraded the position. He could find himself on the way out. All right. Now, second guy on the list, okay. Uh, ben Cleveland, right, offensive guard. Now, Ben Cleveland is kind of interesting, right, because when he was drafted, you know, Ravens fans were all, oh, uh, look at this. Big man, mountain of a guy, Ben Cleveland. Um, I remember seeing all like the uh, the graphic designers going to work with the. They had like this picture of Big Ben Cleveland over top of uh, the Inner Harbor. I'm gonna see if I can find that picture. But anyway, um, it just hasn't panned out so far. So right now, he's going into year three, and I don't think Ben Cleveland was particularly bad last year when he did get a chance to play. I just don't think he's become so far the player that Ravens have wanted him to be. All right. Now, year one, you're a rookie. It's okay if you don't you don't play a lot, especially offensive line. It can be a tough position to learn. A lot of physical demands. Um, I understand all that, right? Year two, last year. I know the Ravens always believe in competition. Competition, the best man wins. They believe in that. Um, usually, they follow they follow through on that. But I believe if you ask John Harbaugh honestly, 
he thought Ben Cleveland was going to win that position and probably wanted Ben Cleveland to win that position because he was a third round pick the previous year last year. You know what I mean? So they are looking for him to become that guy to be a starter. And all Ben Cleveland did last year at the start training camp was fail the conditioning test multiple days in a row and then lose the job to Ben Powers. And all respect to Ben Powers, Ben Powers was the guy who was on the outside looking in that a lot of Ravens fans, myself included, thought Ben Powers might be traded you know, for, for a late draft pick, kind of how Ben Bredesen was to the Giants a couple years ago, right? We thought Ben Powers was on the same contradictory. Now, kudos to Ben Powers for taking the um the opportunity, starting, and getting paid in Denver. So, you know, that's how you take advantage of your opportunities and make the best out of it. So, shout out to him for that. But Ben Cleveland, on the other hand, wasn't very impressed with doing training camp. Like I said, failed multiple condition tests to start and was kind of just a rotational piece being mixed in. Now, like, I, like we just mentioned, Ben Powers is now gone. He's in Denver, got his money. Great for him. What can he do now? But it seems like the Ravens are trying to have different guys fill in and left guard. Now, obviously, Ravens want competition. I mentioned that before, right? But it seems like they're actively trying to find different people other than Ben Cleveland. Signing John Simpson, who uh, last season, who uh, John Harbaugh seems to love, right? He seems like every time you mention uh, John Simpson, he kind of like lights up about him. Um, saw a lot of rookie they're, get, they're getting uh, opportunities in there Daniel Falele second year who was a tackle they're giving him opportunities in there at guard then obviously Ben Cleveland himself so it just seems to me that the Ravens aren't too sure about what they have in Ben Cleveland and they really really are trying to uh, uh, test out all scenarios to see if he's really going to be the guy and if he doesn't win this job I don't know. He might be in position of not, might be in danger of not being on this team next season. Um, so or this upcoming season, I should say. So uh, Ben Cleveland has a lot to prove in training camp. Um, he needs to start off strong. He cannot come out the gate failing conditioning tests that like he's done in the past. He needs to be able to be on practice training, on the field practice training camp day one. He needs to be out there ready to go. He just needs to be right. Um, now, all right, I know that I said this is about people who I think might get cut, okay? Now, I don't think this guy has a high possibility of being cut, but it is a situation that we need to monitor, right? And that's Patrick Ricard. Patrick Ricard, excuse me, I know. Pro Bowl Pat, Project Pat, right? Listen, he was a mainstay in Gray Roman's office. I think he played like 60, 65% of the snaps uh, last year. But we're coming into a new offense, right? From everywhere I've seen Tom Munkin be at, just from looking around, he hasn't used the fullback prominently in his offense, right? A fullback has not been featured in his offense, especially a big, bruising kind of fullback like Patrick Ricard is going to be, right? He doesn't have much versatility to be a true tight end, even if you want to say, oh, he, the Ravens don't have a traditional blocking tight end on their roster since they lost Josh Oliver. Um, I get that, but at the same time, Josh Oliver also offers uh, vertical stretchability going down the field catching passes. If, if uh, Patrick Card's in the game, we know he's blocking, right? Uh, it's very rarely that you're going to get Patrick Card pass. Now, you might get a little swing out to the flat, something like that. But if he's in the game, he's blocking, right? We, that, that's just how it is with Patrick Card. And there's no, there's no disrespect to that. He's a fullback. That's what they do. But in this Ravens offense, is a fullback really going to be used? We don't know. And then on top of that, right, why, why I don't think he will be cut, because he is, like I said, he's in the second year of a three-year deal, um, Ravens have to take on Dev Cat to cut him, but um, he's going to play a lot less. There's already been articles talking about that, that he's going to play a lot less, right? So 65% down to whatever that might be, maybe half of that, okay? And then this season, he's starting he's starting training camp on a pup list, physically unable to perform, all right? Uh, I believe he's had some hip surgeries or something like that. So he's eight, he's 29 years old, so he's coming around to that time where I know you usually say running back drop off at 30, but... Patrick Carr's the fullback. He's done a lot of damage. He's done a lot of bruising and banging around on his body. You know what I'm saying? So he's coming tough to that point. And then lastly, Ben Mason. Ben Mason is the Ravens' second uh, fullback. The Ravens keep deciding to bring Ben Mason back, right? It's got to be for a reason. He can't just be here to always be the training camp tight end. No team in the NFL is carrying. Most teams in the NFL don't carry one fullback. There is no team in the NFL carrying two fullbacks, okay? So, and on top of that, Ben Mason has been impressive in off-season workouts. I remember they were talking about a day in OTAs where Ben Mason was catching, caught like four or five passes in a row, right? 
So, like I said, I don't think Patrick Ricard will be cut, but it's something to monitor because Ben Mason, while he's not as big as Patrick Ricard, he does actually offer that that ability to go down the field and catch a pass, right? That's not Patrick Ricard's game, right? So in this offense, the Ravens are running. You need to be versatile. I don't know if Patrick Ricard is versatile enough in this new offense. He was perfect for Greg Roman's offense. Absolutely match made in heaven. But in this new offense, I don't know if there's a role for Pat Ricard. All right? So those are my three guys to watch out for who are fighting for training camp spots, right? Uh, James Boche and Ben Cleveland for sure. Patrick Ricard, like I said, I don't think he'll be cut. But something to monitor and look out for, all right? Uh, give me your guys uh, that you're looking out for in training camp. Somebody who needs to step up and prove their work during training camp to secure a roster spot. Let me know if you guys got some other things than what I have. But I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gabriel. This is Fan TV. I'm out.